Hello everyone from around the world. How is your day today? In today's video, I am going to show you my game against a Fidi master from Brazil with the name of Renato Fort in chess.com. You know, actually, in our game, he used the Banco Gambit against my opening. Now, if you are playing against a player with a Banco Gambit opening in black species, maybe you can try and follow this tutorial. Here I am white, I play d4, he plays knight to f6, c4, and now he plays c5. You know, there are many options for the white species to play on, like playing knight to f3, or playing e3, or maybe capture the pawn, or knight to c3. But you know, my friends, the most popular move is the move to d5. In this move, sometimes black will proceed into a Banco Gambit. Now his move is the pawn to b5, attacking my base pawn. But of course, in this position, we should capture that Gambit. And here, black continues to play a6. So I capture again that pawn in a6 because that is the idea if you face an opponent using the Banco Gambit. So in this position, black will proceed to g6. My opponent now is playing g6. Same with the most common moves of the Banco. Now I play knight to c3 to play e4. And here, black moves his bishop here in g7. Actually, if black is playing the Banco Gambit, he should capture the pawn in a6, guarding this diagonal. But the best reply here for white is just to play e4. What is the idea after this? Because black captures the bishop up. That's the normal continuation for the Banco Gambit. And here we can just capture that using our king. We are not afraid or we are not be worried if our king is not yet castled or cannot be castled in the future. Because we have the idea of playing knight to f3, pawn to g3, king here to g2, and rook here to e1. And that's the idea that the king looks like he is castling normally. Like for this example, the continuation for black is d6. And after that, we can play g3 to hide our king here here, sidestepping and let the rook comes out in e1. And after this, for example, bishop to g7, and here we can play now king to g2. For example, if they castle kingside, and then there's the time that you can develop your knight in f3. And after that, for example, knight to b7, and here rook to e1. To defend the pawn in e4 because we have a plan of pushing the pawn in a4 and putting our knight here in b5. That's the idea if you face the Banco Gambit. Now, for example, if they play knight here to g4, because there are some plan playing the bishop here in d4 attacking the pawn, or maybe queen here in b6, pushing that pawn and attacking the pawn in f2. There are many ways the Banco player will do that. That's why we can play queen to e2. And after that, they can play queen to a5. And now we will play bishop to d2. Because the bishop is very strong in that diagonal, maybe there is some captures. But if he captures, for example, bishop takes knight, then we can recapture using our bishop, not our pawn. That's the idea. Of course, they will not do that because the dark square of the king side of him is not strong. It weakens if if he exchanges his bishop. So, in this kind of setup, he should bring his rook here in b8 to attack the queen side. That's the idea of a Banco Gambit. Now, to stop that kind of attack, we can play a4 to place our knight here in b5. And yes, they might play queen to b4 to attack the b2 pawn because if knight jumps here in b5, then this pawn will be captured because the bishop is also attacking the b2 pawn. And in that position, it's very hard to handle if queen already captures our pawn in b2 without compensation. So, if we take back to the position, after queen here to b4, we can play h3 to first remove the knight and let that knight jumps away from the g4 square. We can say, shoo, 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 go away knight. Okay, so knight might go back here in f6, stopping the defense of the bishop. So we can now start knight to b5 and now the queen is trapped. His queen has nowhere to go but to wait to be captured. So, if knight here in h6, there is knight to d1 attacking the queen directly with our bishop. Of course, in this time, he cannot capture the b2 because it is already defended by the knight. So, what he should do is to exchange the queen. And after that, we can play queen to c1 attacking the queen here in b3. So, if that what will happen, maybe rook captures pawn. We can take it back after queen takes. Then we can start to play bishop takes h6 and we are winning the position. So that's the idea of playing the Banco Gambit. And now what he did in our game, he played bishop to g7. Maybe he is planning to castle. Later he will capture the pawn. That's the idea of a Banco Gambit. Now I proceeded to play the move e4. Now he castles and here I play knight to f3. He played queen to a5 and now I play bishop to d2. Because if knight captures the pawn, I can just recapture 
because it is no longer a pin. I unpin by playing bishop to d2. Now the continuation for this is he captures the pawn and now I play a4. Planning to play knight to b5 later if this bishop would be exchanged. Now the continuation d6 and here I play g3. Here in this example playing g3 is actually one of the moves against the Banco Gambit but this time it is useless to play g3. It is because in this position we can just directly capture the bishop in a6 and after that captures then we can simply play queen to b1 attacking the pawn and for example if they play queen to c4 we can play b3 and here b4 then we can castle our king to kingside. That's the idea if we face the Banco Gambit. But here in our position I play g3 which is somewhat like in inaccuracy but still the game proceeds knight b2 d7 and now I play captures the bishop and after queen takes captures I play knight to b5 so that I can have a chance to castle to king side and now rook to c8 maybe he will push the pawn to c4 jumping the knight in c5 pressuring the pawn in e4 because he has two knights attacking the pawn for example that's one of his plan but now we can play queen to e2 of course to support the pawn here i just mistakenly move my knight to b5 because instead of playing knight to e5 this is a mistake maybe because after knight to e5 this knight will capture the pawn in e4 and it's hanging i forgot it that's why it's better for this to play queen to e2 first that's the idea my friend but here i play knight to b5 he didn't send my pawn in e4 i don't know i maybe he saw it but we don't know what is his idea running in his mind that is why he play rook to c8 i now i play queen to e2 he play knight here to e8 planning to go here in c7 but still i proceeded my uh, move by playing bishop to c3 exchanging his dark squared bishop because once that bishop will be exchanged he has a weak dark squared bishop in the king side now he continues to play knight to c7 and here i castled king side here he did not capture the knight but rather play rook to b8 and now i play rook f to e1 because if he captures the knight i recaptures and after queen takes e1 then i have to play in this example queen takes b5 if rook captures that then that rook would be hanging i can capture the rook in a8 so i'm winning in this kind of position but here after that move i play rook here to e1 because if i captures that knight then my queen is hanging that's why i play rook to e1 and now he captures and here i recaptures and in this position, I was shocked because he sacrificed his queen by capturing my rook in a1. So that is nice. So I capture his queen, he captures his rook. By the way, let's take it back. After that captures, why not capturing the pawn? If the queen captures the pawn, then there is queen takes b5. Of course, he will capture the queen. He will not choose to capture the rook because if black captures the rook, then the answer is just capturing the rook in b8 with check. And after knight takes, then there is rook takes e1 is winning for the white species. So let's take it back. And after this move, the continuation is he play rook takes e1. And I'm happy it's because he exchanged his queen. Although it exchanged with 10 points because queen is 9 points, two rooks are 10. That is why he exchanged his queens. Maybe that is also logical, but after that captures, I just hide my king in g2. Now the continuation, knight to b6. So I play bishop takes bishop to weaken his dark squared after that capture. I play pawn to b4 because if he captures that pawn then i can have queen to b2 that is check and forking his rook that's the nice idea of mine so after that he knows it he plays rook to b1 and now i continue to play pawn captures the pawn and after pawn captures the pawn then i play here queen to d3 i have the plan of capturing this pawn maybe i can play queen to c2 capturing that pawn maybe but here he defended the position by playing rook to c1 and now I saw a great move queen to a3 and in this time he resigns the game queen is now threatening the c1 rick 
and now I have fork here in a7 because if he go here in a knight here for example to d7 then I can play queen takes rook winning the game and if for example if he play for example rook to c4 then I can play queen to a7 attacking the uh, two pieces here in the back rank. So in this game, he resigns. You know, he is a FD master from Brazil, but fortunately, we won against a FD master because he used the Banco Gambit and we know it how to defend against Banco Gambit. If you learned something in this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you will be updated if I have new videos to be uploaded in the future. Thank you so much for supporting this small channel and I hope that I can teach many chess enthusiasts from around the world. If you know this opening and how to defend the Banco Gambit, then you can just skip the video or maybe you can just proceed to the next video. But if you like it, you think that this is very helpful, maybe you can share this to your friends. And I hope in this video, you learn something new if your opponent is a Banco Gambit player. Thank you so much. I am Jones Chess, your personal coach and your chess partner. Goodbye.